It's new helmet day, but probably not for the reason that you think. So recently someone I met last year out at uh, the Moose Mountain area invited me to come out and go ride with them. They wanted to ride 727 into Flight 66 and knowing that the 727 Fiverr race was coming up that I saw that as a good opportunity to get a little bit more uh, familiar with the trail as I had actually only ever ridden it twice before. So the crux of that video was going to be filming Flight 66, another trail in the Moose Mountain area and a big jump trail. However, the day didn't exactly turn out that way, as you will see. Nevertheless, I wanted to actually kind of keep all that original footage because he's a really great rider uh, with lots of style and it was just like a nice, fun, chill section because we were recording 727 without really any particular purpose other than just recording it. Nevertheless, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut into that original video and then join you a little bit later on uh, back here uh, to discuss what ended up happening. Just because like they're already like, I should, I honestly need to be riding with sunglasses. <laughs> it's, I, I rode regular sunglasses all last year. I'm so glad that I got these. Are the, are the, these are the, the Wildcats. I need those. You've got like I a nice kind of rose. I need, I need something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome back. Uh, so today I'm out with a friend and we're actually going to drop into 727 here back at Moose Mountain. Um, I'm mostly going to skip through this video because a couple weeks ago I actually just posted kind of like a longer breakdown of it. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut off into another trail that I'm currently forgetting the name of, but I'll, I'll post it down below later. Um, but the purpose of today is we're actually going to go down and uh, hit the jump line on Flight 66. So. Flight 66 out here in the Moose Mountain area is like their big machine built jump trail, or at least half of it. There's like an upper and lower. They didn't actually sort of finish completing the build that they, I think, originally set out to do. Just cost overruns is the explanation I heard. Nevertheless, um, yeah, it'll be good to, uh, you know, hit some bigger jumps uh, now that we're starting to get our riding legs out uh, this year. So, um, yeah, uh, it'll be good also to hit up 727 here again. I will record it and I'll just kind of post like the highlights. Uh, so let's go get it on. You got pressure? Thanks, so. man. I got a digital uh, pressure gauge if you want to check. Oh, I, I'm a fuel guy. Okay. <laughs> trail, is it? Oh, no, it's just up here. Yeah. Oh, that sounds terrible. There we go, that's better. I don't really remember this trail, but whatever. Yeah, no worries. There's, I've done it once. there's one double that I did, I didn't even mean to do, and I overshot it. So I might actually pause and like session that a little bit. I'm down. Yeah, um, like just holler if you want to like yeah, okay, sure. take a shot or something. I'm just gonna, I don't think I'm just gonna be any crazy here, but. No, no, no. Okay. All right, bud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to look so, at the Yeah, yeah. That's what I was about to say, actually. Trusting these corners with all that loose shale. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was like two wheel jerks. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh... Woo! Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Almost lost it. Oh, 
Yeah. yeah. Woo. That's the double. Oh, that's it? That's that one right there. You want to do it again? That that's that's got to be my honestly right there. That's my favorite jump on this whole track. Okay, let's do it again. Yeah. I'm pushing. Yeah, that's just like a nice, nice breaks off kind of thing. Actually, tell you what, I'm gonna set up the uh, whole tripod this for you. Get your banger reel clips. That wasn't a good line. Whew. Ah. Yeah, take a pause. Ah. Oh boy. Pedal strike. Loose, man. Oh man. You right? I uh I did a header into this, which was less than comfortable. No loss of consciousness. Uh, thank you. That's greatly appreciated. Yeah, it's uh I saw your uh, tires kind of slipping out of it, and I went for a pedal. And uh yeah, pedal struck on something. That's unfortunate. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh. all right, bear with me. Uh. Oh, oh, oh it's good. Quite a loose section, man. Like, look at it. <sighs> this whole trail, yeah, it's been. Uh, it's been. Uh, I'm drifting my my tires actually oh, to line you. up too. So sometimes it's not as slippery. Cause it's just me like trying to line up. Oh, some better days. Oh. Yeah, that's a helmet. Is that from right now? Yeah, it's right now. Yeah, that's done. Yeah. Yeah. Did your head hit the tree? Yeah, my head hit the tree. But yeah. Not your face. Bro. No, the top of my head right here. Holy sh man. Uh, I felt better. <laughs> yeah. Right though, you feel any? Yeah, I was worried about like compression. The helmet's. Good. Yeah. See anything in the back or no? Just the front. You're gonna have to adjust some of the cushions and stuff in there. Like, see how it's all like contorted? Oh, the MIPS did its MIP thing. It MIPS. <laughs> I don't even know if that will move. This is worth getting on camera. <laughs> I'm gonna crash, get it on film, right? You definitely got it on film. I can't move that, can you? It's probably like attached to something down here. There's a, a little peg here that should there be able to go. slide. Oh, nice, thank it's you. It's just underneath the foam. Yeah. That plastic design. Here, watch it. Oh, yeah. Trail. I don't even know. Uh, I know I pedal struck and it, uh, it threw me like super right up on the bars. I'm not actually sure what happened after that. Right there, I think. You can see. 
I think that's where I landed because I slid into the tree. You guys okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you though. Oh, this looks like a divot. I don't know if that that's was. That's how far back it happened. Yeah. Because you're going, we're going fast, so yeah, like it's true. over pretty quick. Yeah, I think this is where my body landed about here, <laughs> and then my head into. <laughs> Jeez, Jeez, Louise. I'm surprised it got like mangled so bad. Hit it quite hard. Oh yeah, I smoked it. It's um. I didn't black out, but I, I knew I needed to lay there for a second. Oh man. Helmet's still, like there's no intrusion into the helmet, so it did its thing. Well, welcome back. And uh, as you can see, that didn't exactly turn out the way that I thought that day was going to go. However, it kind of impressed upon me the importance to have a bit of a discussion around traumatic brain injuries, concussions, um, emergency first response, uh, and what we can do as mountain bikers to be better as a community. And I honestly should have picked up on this a couple weeks ago because I was chatting with uh, a couple, uh, Brendan, and I am terrible with names. I can't remember your name. You had a really cute pup and you gave me a beer. So thank you very much for that. And she had asked me, she said, um, you know, what can I do to sort of better prepare myself if I ever had to assist with my partner, you know, if he crashed. And uh, at the time I had given her, um, you know, a couple of suggestions, which we'll talk about later on in this video. But um, now that it's happened to myself, I think let's, uh, let's break down a few things and, you know, have a bit of a conversation about it. For legal reasons, this video is for entertainment purposes only. It does not replace any kind of formal education or training. And I'm going to do my best to avoid using any phrases like you can or you should that may be interpreted as uh, me giving advice. I'm going to try to stick to things uh, very objectively. Nevertheless, I do want to actually start here with the helmet and the reason why I have all this new protection behind me. So this is the Fox Speedframe Pro. I actually did not do a dedicated video to this last year, partially because when I did the introduction to the equipment that I was riding, I actually hadn't even picked it up yet. Interestingly enough though, through the crash, I actually learned that this visor is adjustable. How cool is that? I did not know that because the tree kindly adjusted it for me. Nevertheless, you can see quite the sizable dent here on the top and I'm gonna cut in an image to better show you. But on the inside of the foam here, you can actually see that it is cracked all the way across. And, uh, and so this is, uh, this is a new helmet. It's unfortunately didn't even last me a year. Well, actually I shouldn't say that. I didn't last it a year uh, because so far as I'm concerned, this helmet did absolutely everything perfectly. So that gave me 100% confidence to go and buy another identical helmet to this one. So if the day ever comes that I'm able to grow this channel big enough, I would love to have like a studio and hang this on the wall. Nevertheless, let's shift gears and talk about some of the literature that we have. So this is a bit of an older textbook. I think the publication date is going to be around 2010-ish, 2011. And I want to read to you something because it was relevant if we go back and review the actual video footage from the crash. So under types of head injuries, uh, it says various terms are used to classify and describe brain trauma in some cases with overlap as follows. So a concussion, also termed mild traumatic brain injury or MTBI for short, is a reversible interference with brain function, usually resulting from a mild blow to the head which causes sudden excessive movement of the brain, disrupting neurological function and leading to a loss of consciousness. And if we go back to the video, you can actually hear me say that I did not lose consciousness because I was using that as a diagnostic indicator of whether I had a mild traumatic brain injury. So let's play that clip now. Less than comfortable. No loss of consciousness. So that was my self-assessment. However, if we look at this text, which is newer, uh, I believe the date of publication is 2014. It is also a more comprehensive text as well. This is published, uh, copyright 2018, sorry. So under clinical features in history for mild traumatic brain injuries, this text reads, 
It is not uncommon for MTBI, mild traumatic brain injury, symptoms to dissipate by the time patients reach the emergency department. It is important to ask patients specifically about symptoms of disorientation, confusion, amnesia, uh, disordered awareness with or without loss of consciousness. A number of MTBI patients do not experience a loss of consciousness and if they do, it is difficult to quantify unless there are witnesses. Patients may report headache, dizziness, vertigo imbalance, lack of awareness of surroundings, nausea, and vomiting. Patients may also complain of mood and cognitive disturbances, sensitivity to light and noise, impaired verbal memory, delayed language comprehension, slowed speech, and exhibit balance problems. So if we actually take a look at this video, then we can catch a couple other things um, that are indicators here for MTBIs. I saw your uh, tires kind of slipping out of it, and I went for a pedal, and uh, yeah, a pedal struck on something. So I described there that I saw my riding partner's tires slipping out a little bit, I went for a pedal, and then I had a pedal strike and that caused the crash. It sounds logical, but it actually doesn't really make any sense, or at least half of it doesn't. The half being that um, what my partner's tires were doing did not precipitate, involve, or directly impact my actions whatsoever with regards to that crash. What was likely happening was my brain was trying to piece together bits of memory that it could from before the actual event, and I must have remembered or recalled that I observed their tires uh, skidding out. In actuality, what I know uh, happened now that I can think more clearly is that I blew a turn, I went too wide. Uh, they are a faster rider than I am, they made the turn great, I took it uh, rather wide. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, we were riding through this, you know, cool forest, there was the smoke or haze in the air, and I thought, oh, this would make for great video footage. And I was right behind them, but when they made that corner faster than I did, I thought, oh, I should try to catch up and, and you know, ride closely behind them again. And it was actually me trying to catch up for the sake of making good video that actually caused the crash. There's something else worth uh, worth catching here as well. This whole trail, yeah, it's been uh, it's been. Uh, I'm drifting my my tires. I've got to line up too. Sometimes it's it's subtle there, but what I'm trying to do is pay attention to what my riding partner was actually saying. Uh, and I was trying to respond to them at the same time it, that I started to say this whole trail has been um, has been um, and I actually don't finish my sentence. So it would be uh, fair to say that that was uh, a, a sign of mental confusion. And there's even a third indicator here as well. I can't move that, can you? So it was really subtle and I, as the casualty in this event, could have done a much better job if I had a bit more self-awareness. However, I was attempting to realign the MIPS liner that rotated and is still rotated in the helmet, and I wasn't able to do it. And I actually ended up passing it off to my riding partner who graciously helped uh, orient it as best he could. However, I, I just didn't have the mental capacity to uh, evaluate the situation, think critically, develop a solution and implement it. I, I just didn't have that mental capacity in that particular moment. So there are three sort of subtle examples that actually, you know, lend itself quite well to fitting the definition of a mild traumatic brain injury. So if we flip the page, we can see under the differential diagnosis section of mild traumatic brain injuries, says it's characterized by symptoms of confusion and amnesia with or without preceding loss of consciousness. Again, contradictory to that original text. And if we go one page further to post-concussive syndrome, we can read post-concussive syndrome or PCS refers to a constellation of symptoms that include somatic, so headache, dizziness, vertigo, nausea, fatigue, sensitivity to noise and light, cognitive, so difficulties with attention, concentration, and memory, and effective complaints, so irritability, anxiety, depression, and emotional lability that occur following a minor traumatic brain injury or concussion and persist beyond the expected recovery period. So that is post-concussive syndrome, but we can see that the post-concussive syndrome uh, signs and symptoms are uh, basically extensions of 
the signs and symptoms associated with mild traumatic brain injury. So what can you do as a mountain biker? Well, referring back to that conversation that I had with the person whose name I can't remember, I'm really sorry, um, is that you can look into courses and training programs for just regular civilians, such as the Wilderness First Aid and Wilderness First Responder. Now, for the sake of full disclosure, I have not taken either course, but I have spoken to individuals who have, and I have a general understanding about the curriculum that it offers without knowing the specifics. Nevertheless, the responder course, I believe is twice the duration. I think it's an 80 hour versus a 40 hour course. So you're looking like one or two weeks and that's designed more for professionals. Think like your summer camp uh, leaders and things like that. Whereas the wilderness first aid, I think is in, uh, oriented more towards the general public. Either way, in speaking with individuals who have completed this training, there uh, appears to be a discussion about these types of injuries and how you can assist in them. So whether that is, you know, being aware of uh, spinal injuries and how to appropriately, um, you know, assist or handle, or for that matter, not handle those patients and uh, recognition of these sort of signs and symptoms. So I'm going to close out by reading this under the disposition for patients with minor traumatic brain injury. Warning signs for acute deterioration, such as inability to waken the patient, severe or worsening headaches, somnolescence or confusion, restlessness, unsteadiness or seizures, difficulties with vision, vomiting, fever or stiff neck, urinary or bowel incontinence, and weakness or numbness involving any part of the body should prompt the caregiver to seek immediate medical help. So please, Take this as an opportunity that wherever you are to pursue additional uh, you know, medical training so that we can be a stronger mountain bike community and we can be more self-reliant in the remote areas that we often operate in given the higher risk nature of mountain biking and the probability of these types of injuries. So thank you very much for watching. I do greatly appreciate it. I'm gonna close this video out with a couple of uh, close-up photos of the helmet as well as a couple of clips of uh, my riding partner for that day hitting some decent jumps and drops. So if you found this video helpful, please consider clicking the like button as it helps others find this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of content. And uh, for those of you who are looking to help support the channel, I'm really bad at self-promotion and I don't want to abuse the opportunity uh, you know, uh, that I have here sharing uh, you know, this type of content with people. However, I am very conscious of the fact that at present, I don't yet have the 1000 subscriber minimum to make even a single penny. Um, so if you are looking for a way to support the channel, um, you know, uh, that you appreciate the good lighting and the good audio and uh, the type of content that I'm trying to deliver. I do want to um, remind you again that I do have a couple of the uh, Grey Wolf Outdoor Alpine leashes left. Um, this is a leash that uses real dynamic climbing rope, uh, it uses real bar tacking, no X stitching or clamps and it uses a real genuine rated locking carabiner so that if you are the type of person that likes to venture out into the mountains with your four-legged friend and they were to ever take a fall down a slope, then the dynamic climbing rope here is going to help reduce forces transmitted to your dog's harness so that you don't blow fasteners and they continue to, to tumble. And the dry treated core and sheath is going to minimize water absorption. So even if you're just walking down Banff Avenue in inclement weather, um, then this is going to reduce that absorption. It's also extremely durable from an abrasion resistance perspective. So if your dog's climbing up and over, you know, a sharp ledge, this is going to resist that much better. And uh, yeah, this is just an all around great product. So if you are interested in uh, supporting the channel as well as getting uh, an absolute fantastic product that I'm really truly proud of, then head over to the Grey Wolf Outdoor Products on Instagram and uh, send me a direct message there. I, again, I do have a few left in the four foot and the six foot lengths. So in the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely do appreciate it and uh, we'll see you in another one. So you take care and bye for now.